let's see here. I'm going to call the meeting to order for Wednesday, February 16th at 6.02 PM. Uh, <laughs> first item on the agenda is the agenda review. We'd like to add um, item 11A, executive session, personnel matter. Um, this will be uh, just information, no action to be taken. Um, and then uh, can I have a motion to accept the agenda as revised, please? Uh, Thanks, Jack. Is there a second? Thanks, Joanna. Um, I'm going to take a roll vote. Alicia? Yes. Joanna? Yes. Susan? Yes. Jack? Yes. Grant? Yes. Nina? What is this for? Sorry, I was just a couple minutes late. Um, this is for the agenda review. We're going to add 11A executive session personnel matters. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you. Peter? Yes. Katie? Yes. And myself, yes. Okay, so agenda has been revised. Um, please join me for a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, visitors. Um, do we have any visitors that have indicated that they would like to address the board? If you want to participate in public comment, you would um, put your full name in the chat, please. I'm seeing none. Does anybody see anything? Nothing yet. Okay, well, no visitors, then we're going to move on in the agenda. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have two things, um, four sets of minutes in the media packet. Anybody want to pull anything out for discussion? Hearing none, we'll accept the consent agenda as submitted. Next item on the agenda is reports to the board. Um, the first item was, was to be a student presentation. We have learned very recently that they would like to move that presentation to March 16th. So that presentation is going to be postponed to March 16th. Next item on the agenda is the budget information presentation and review. Um, Bill and Martha are going to do this presentation, so I'll turn it over to them. Thanks, Bill. Um, we thought we'd start pretty similar to what we do in the um, budget, in, in the informational meeting that will be happening next Wednesday on the 23rd. Um, we'll be doing via Zoom, but we'll basically do some of the same thing here. Some of you had an opportunity to see the YouTube video about our budget information that stars Milda. Martha and I have a, a supporting role there, but they're the stars of it. Um, and uh, so we're going to show that. You know, but come on, you can laugh at me. <laughs> I guess she's not. <laughs> um, and then, um, Bill, do you want me to go on with the format afterwards, or do you want to just start with that and then? Um, yeah, so the, the plan is to watch the, uh, this little, um, uh, I guess we'll call it a short movie and then um, take questions from the board and any other participating folks that need clarification about some of the information that's either in this presentation or that you've seen on the, the uh, Maple Run website or any other of the publications that are out there. Yeah, so we're trying to do it more as a forum so people have a chance to ask questions. Uh, Martha and I and Nilda will try to help with the answers to those and if we can't get something, we'll get something back as soon as we can. So, uh, John, if you can present um, 
if you can change it to the movie, the YouTube movie. And this is posted up on our website if people want to go look at it. Uh, and then this is going to be about 10 minutes. So it's a little bit of a group share of a, uh, of a movie here. Hello, welcome to the video presentation of the proposed 2022-2023 Maple Run Unified School District budget. My name is Nilda Ganella French and I am the chair of the Maple Run Unified School District Board of Directors. Maple Run is a school district comprised of five schools and also the Collins Pearly Sports Complex. We serve over 2,700 students across our schools. As you can see from this slide, in a few minutes, you'll hear from our superintendent, Bill Kimball, and our business manager, Martha Gagne. They'll walk you through the really important details of this proposed budget. Before explaining the budget details, I thought it would be essential to review the goals and the board's role. As we develop the budget, our primary goal is to focus on the MRUSD mission and student needs within the community's cost. The Maple Run Unified School District is where inquiring minds, compassionate hearts, creative expression, healthy lives, and service to the community develop so all can learn, achieve, and succeed. In addition to that primary goal, during the pandemic, the board has focused on supporting the increasing needs of our students. We seek to ensure that MRUSD meets or exceeds education quality standards that are set forth by the state of Vermont. So these education quality standards, also called EQS, relate to class size and staffing requirements. These regulations have to do with the ratio of students to adults in the building, teachers to students, counselors to students, and administrators to students. With things like that, we always want to be sure we are meeting or exceeding these standards. We also seek to develop a budget that supports the implementation of key initiatives in our district. Some of these are proficiency-based learning and curriculum development, multi-tiered systems of support, mental health supports, as well as maintaining our buildings. For the past three years, Maple Run has focused on increasing and supporting our students' mental health needs. We began this work by hiring a director of student supports at the district level and by adding staff support for both students and families. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we found these supports invaluable to provide educational access to every student. Due to the loss of staff at some of our agency partners, we have had to use both our local and grant resources to create a support system and hire required staff to support students. With that, I'd like to pass it on to Superintendent Bill Kimball so he can provide more detail on how Maple Run is both implementing our vision and supporting students during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, Nella. Hello, my name is Bill Kimball and I'm the Superintendent of Maple Run Unified School District. As you may know, the federal government provided COVID-19 aid to the states to allocate to school districts to respond to the pandemic. The first two allocations, ESSER 1 and ESSER 2, were meant for school districts to respond to the pandemic by helping with salaries, food, personnel, protective equipment, and other immediate needs. ESSER 3 is a method to provide a means for recovery from the pandemic. Our recovery from the pandemic will enable Maple Run to provide the personnel and resources needed to measure where our students are academically and socially emotionally, as well as to provide them with the means to meet the expectations of our school district's mission. To support the recovery this coming year, Maple Run will use ESSER 3 funds to support the cost of 21 professionals, including social workers, guidance counselors, and teachers. The funds needed for these positions are not included in this local budget. However, our ESSER 3 allocations will not cover the cost of all identified pandemic related needs within the $13.2 million allotment for us to use over the next two years. 
The pandemic costs will continue to increase as the effects of the pandemics have extended across another school year. Moving forward, Maple Run pro proposed general budget will include the additional funds required to provide academic and emotional supports for all students. I want to highlight several components of the budget. First, the Maple Run Unified School District follows ratios recommended by Vermont's education quality standards for class size and staffing allocation. Our envisioning plan has focused on social and emotional learning, well-being, and mental health, student engagement and academics, and academic success. In this proposed budget, we are requesting additional supports for all of these three areas, with the most significant allocation to social, emotional learning, well-being, and mental health. In our local budget, we have asked for additional guidance counselors, social workers, and health staff. To increase academic success, we are asking for two additional full-time staff to have on-site instruction for world languages at all three of our elementary schools and other staff needed at the high school to support and increase student enrollment. In addition to the local budget for next year, we are using our ESSER allocations to renovate our village to provide better virus mitigation and other health and safety requirements to improve our educational environment. We can implement many enhancements we have identified over the past several years with access to these federal funds, such as improvements to our HVAC systems, improved fire detection prevention systems, and greater physical access for all students. Next, Martha Gagne will discuss the details of the proposed budget and how it affects the tax rates. Hi, I'm Martha Gagne, business manager for the school district. In order to make education happen in Maple Run, there is an operations team which supports our amazing teachers and support staff. These individuals keep our buildings clean and in good repair, ensure our students have transportation to and from school, offer after-school co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities, work with our outside partners to provide over 55,000 meals a month to students, manage our IT systems and provide financial and human services to support a $61 million a year enterprise. We work hard to keep expenses down while delivering the services the district expects. The proposed budget is $64,797,075, a 4.75% increase over the current year, which is primarily driven by increases in salaries and benefits along with the addition of the proposed positions described earlier, as well as increased costs to our utilities and supplies. Looking at the overall budget, 76% is allocated to staffing the schools to support our children. Your tax rate is not based solely on the increase in the budget, but on a host of other state and local factors. Most importantly, this year, a $90 million surplus in the state education fund. After taking these factors into account, Maple Run's pre-CLA tax rate is estimated to go down by just over six cents. Since we consolidated into a single school district in 2017, our pre-CLA tax rates have been fairly flat. <clears throat> the final step in determining the local tax rate is to apply the CLA. CLA stands for Common Level of Appraisal and is a factor the state applies to the appraised property values in each town so they are more accurately reflect market values. The estimated tax rates for fiscal year 22-23 will go down 1.42 cents in Fairfield up 1.15 cents in St. Albans Town and up 2.3 cents in St. Albans City. For example, it is estimated a $200,000 home site in St. Albans City will see a $47 increase in their property taxes. The same value of home site in the town will see a $23 increase in property taxes. And in Fairfield, a $200,000 home site will see a $28 decrease. All of these estimates do not consider income sensitivity, 
and we encourage everyone that is eligible to apply for the income sensitivity program, which may reduce your tax burden. And now back to Bill Kimball, superintendent, to explain what is on the ballot. On the ballot this year are articles for the election of a school district clerk, a school district treasurer, and three members of the school board, each representing one of the towns that Maple Run serves. Also, there are articles that allow the district to borrow money to keep the district running, as well as an article to allow the board to place audited fund balance in the capital reserve fund. Maple Run is proud to offer this budget this year because we know we are preparing students for the future today. Thank you so much for taking the time to view our 2022-23 budget presentation. This was just an overview. There are a lot more de details available, so we invite you to review our materials, especially the more detailed PowerPoint and the annual report on the school district's budget page on our website. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out via the school board's email address you can see in the presentation. Thank you again for watching and please remember to vote. Hey, well, there it is. Um, so if anybody watching has any questions, uh, board members, staff, public, this is, would be a good time to um, ask them and we'll do our best to answer. Does anyone have any questions? If, you're, uh, if you do have a question, it'd be great if you could just put your name in the chat. We'll try to work that way. So Susan has one right here on the board while people are thinking about that, Nelda. Okay, thank you. So Nelda, is this gonna be presented at the informational meeting? Or is this- um, I don't, I don't think we were planning on this actual presentation of the informational meeting. This is the one that's going to be sort of around. Okay. We have a PowerPoint for the informational meeting. Okay, good. Am I and right? We have the PowerPoint. It's really the pleasure of the board if you want to do the more detailed PowerPoint that has probably another 15 slides with it. We probably took half the slides out and put them in this movie. So. Okay. And this movie is going to be pushed to social media to direct people ahead of time where they can... And where they could be looking for the budget pre presentation? Yeah, it's been, we, I'm looking at Aaron because he's the one that actually does it. He pushed it out Facebook, Twitter, okay. and all that stuff. Right. It's gone Thanks. out. We've had probably about 100 views right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We have our informational meeting on, what's the date, Martha? 23rd. February 23rd, next Wednesday. February 23rd at 6 p.m. Correct. And that is open to the public. Looks yes, like Joanna works. has a question. Joanna? No question, just a comment. Just wanted to um, say that I think it's great. These are one of those silver linings of COVID is um, people just putting together informational um, moments like this and being able to get that out to a, a large audience. And I just think that it's um, a you know, really great. I hope we continue to do it and thank you for your work on it. Thank you. Anyone you know, else? Yeah, could I ask a question of, of Bill? The oh. 21 okay. professionals that you're hiring partially with extra funds, are they aware that that's a two-year position? So they're fully, I want to say partially, they're fully funded. Okay. Um, and when we hired them, I was letting them know that they were being hired under grant funds, mm -hmm. but also put a, a position opened up in the district that they were qualified, that was a locally funded position or other grants that are more stable, they would have the opportunity to apply. That makes sense, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Grant, you have a question? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if the yield's been finalized. If what's been finalized? The yield. Um, Martha, do you know? Yeah, no, that won't get finalized until probably May, the legislature. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. I was hoping it would happen before town meeting. No, it, it never That's does. That's how it works. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. Like the last thing the legislature does before they close. Okay. Any other questions from the team here?
Well, thank you. Um, I just want to shout, say a shout out to Dino, the, the videographer guy who can make all the mistakes in the world look good because he's got that splicing program. <laughs> so if you can imagine what you saw today, although it's not perfection, it's a lot of splicing to make things. And so every once in a while you see, you see the screen kind of do a little hiccup and stuff. And that's when he's trying to make things look better than they were. <laughs> so we appreciate his help. All right, moving on um, to item 6C, we have the governance update and Grant's gonna do a presentation on that for the subcommittee that worked on that, which I believe is um, Grant, Nina and Jack, right, Jack? Yes. And I think today you're doing the results-based presentation, is that correct? That's right. Um, and am I able to share my screen? You sure can. You work it out with John and, and Bill. Sorry, Grant, I'll just take one second. Here. No problem. You should be you should be good to go now, Grant. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I believe I'm sharing uh, just the window that shows the uh, presentation. Yes. Yep. Okay. I'm going to start us off with a slide that uh, we saw the last time we, we presented this back in, um, I think, December, um, just as a refresher. Uh, this is the slide that outlines the various relevant types of, of boards uh, that we selected from you know, a list of 12 or 13 board types. Uh, these are the ones that would apply to a school board or could apply to a school board. The one that, um, you know, is sort of uh, required is this constitution, uh, constituent representational. That's because we're an elected body. Um, and so we have uh, a responsibility uh, to balance the interests of the organization and uh, our constituents. Um, hopefully they're, they're aligned, uh, but occasionally they're not. And so, um, you know, we have to uh, try to come up with an outcome that that's uh, sort of best case. Um, and when you have elected body that's uh, that ha that has a constituent representational board, um, that can serve as a foundation for other board types. Um, currently, uh, we have taken on uh, more or less a traditional governance style, which in a lot of ways is just sort of uh, reactionary. Um, you know, we deal with the topics as they come up. Um, we uh, oversee operations, we delegate as necessary, and um, we often have uh, committees that actually perform the work, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, we um, sort of implement things through a vote. Um, and uh, like I said, that, that is sort of reactionary. Uh, we do not have uh, really policies for governance or policies for feedback cycles, um, which is something that the uh, other two board types that we've identified uh, do incorporate. The first one is results-based, and that's what I'll be talking about tonight. Um, this one is focused on creating uh, clear direction, and then um, we work with the superintendent essentially to uh, achieve those results that we've um, set forth in our, in our direction. Um, with a, with a feedback cycle. And that feedback cycle uh, is sort of twofold. Um, we have feedback for the organization and then we also have um, periodically feedback for ourselves for how we're doing as a board. Um, and then the fourth type is policy governance and we'll hear about that next time. Um, this one is um, in a lot of ways simplified uh, from an implementation standpoint. Um, in, it, but it may, it may potentially be harder to adhere to because uh, we wouldn't necessarily have the flexibility in how we set it up. And so we couldn't necessarily tailor it to our own, um, uh, our own practices. Uh, this one has uh, policies that are sort of, um, you know, off the shelf policies. They're, they're already written. We read them and we decide if we can abide by them and then we adopt them. 
Uh, and it's organized in a similar way to results based where you have your goals um, and then you have these uh, three, uh, it, which which we would uh, be um, sort of heavily involved with setting up or do that through a committee like we've discussed. And um, you know, then you have uh, these other additional policies that tell us how we govern as a board, um, set some limitations on the superintendent and also further defines uh, that relationship. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more uh, in depth about the results base. Um, this has uh, sort of five key concepts. Um, I will, I think, summarize these. Um, I'll give everyone just a moment to read um, before I go into them. Okay. So, um, and everyone on the board uh, can have a copy of these slides uh, to go back to for reference. Um, and I, th I think we'll distribute those at some point. Uh, right now, it's just on a uh, Google Doc, as you can see. Um, so, I think that um, I will I'll share it with everybody. Um, but uh, just for tonight, the uh, what we've done is we've broken this down into a set of responsibilities, and then the tasks that, or the deliverable that we need in order to achieve those responsibilities or um, you know, make sure we're fulfilling those responsibilities. Uh, the first is uh, goes with the vision and goals and of the organization. And that's what we've talked about um, a couple of times. I think Bill has a proposal um, and, um, you know, we're ready to um, sort of pull the trigger on convening a committee uh, once, we, once we understand how that committee would function under either the results-based or the um, policy governance frameworks. Um, then the rest of it is defining how we interact with the superintendent. Generally with the results base, uh, the superintendent is seen as a full partner. Um, and so there's a lot of collaboration there. Uh, and then um, we also have systems in place uh, to identify risks uh, and conduct audits. Um, and those would be actually executed by uh, staff. Um, so that wouldn't necessarily be a board responsibility to follow through on those, but it would be a, a board requirement to have those systems in place. And um, then our other main um, role in, in this uh, governance type is to provide feedback and measure performance. So, you know, we'll set up these goals and then we have to have a system for monitoring whether or not they've been achieved. And that would often come about through uh, reporting where, uh, you know, we'd receive a report, we would review the report, and then we would weigh in on whether or not the goal had actually been achieved. Um, and, um, you know, if, if found inadequate, we may request that the um, organization come up with some sort of a remediation action to ensure that it, it does get, um, you know, the goals are met the next time around. Um, you know, and then we'd have basically the same thing for ourselves. So if we um, set up our own governance policies, uh, we would um, hopefully sort of transparently and honestly at some point in the, in the year or maybe twice a year, go through and try to do a self-evaluation and see if we're doing what we need to. And if we're not, um, come up with um, ways to make sure that we can. Um, you know, digging maybe a little bit deeper into those, um, you know, the vision, mission, goals. Um, a lot of this comes straight out of uh, text, um, which I have here. Um, it's called governing for results. Oops. Let's see. My, my back on my background blur is messing things up. Um, so we have this text by uh, Mel Gill. Um, and so we've, we've pulled out the key points uh, for each of the responsibilities that I laid out earlier. Um, I don't think I'm gonna read all of these uh, unless folks really wanna hear them. Um, but the highlights are uh, with the vision mission goals is that it, it provides, um, that's, that's the link that we get between uh, the curriculum and uh, the uh, goals of the organization. 
So it, it needs to be actionable. Um, whatever whatever we lay out here needs to be able, um, you know, the administration needs to look at it, the teachers need to look at it and determine how that uh, translates into a curriculum and into, um, you know, what we've been calling portrait of a graduate. So these are the skills and knowledge that a BFA graduate must have um, at the time of their graduation. Um, this right now is probably fulfilled um, through the mission statement is, is what um, the administration is left to interpret uh, in order to get this and um, to have a vision mission goals in this framework would uh, make that a lot easier for them. Uh, would give them something a little bit more concrete than trying to measure performance. Um, you know, at least at least our vision of performance, um, you know, uh, as the as the mission as the organization's mission statement. Um, if I move ahead to partnering with the superintendent, um, I would say in any governance type that we uh, that we adopt, you know, there'll be um, just because of the nature of our board. Uh, there will be uh, deep collaboration with the superintendent. Uh, in this one, that collaboration is a little more active. Uh, you'll see um, down the road that with policy governance, uh, the superintendent probably has a little more freedom. Um, and that all we all we do is set up limitations. We tell you know, say you know, do whatever you need to do, just steer clear, don't do X, Y, Z. Um, here, I think it's a little bit more collaborative, um, and also um, you know, results based. So. Uh, you know, we will define the objectives and move towards them together. Um, the, uh, you know, the third bullet or the third responsibility had was risk management. Um, this is really setting up a framework for risk management. Um, and uh, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with um, ensuring that, uh, you know, the, the, school is, the schools are properly funded. Um, you know, this is this is all the stuff that sort of could go wrong um, to uh, uh, impede the progress towards the goals, right? Um, and so we need to have a system in place to acknowledge that those exist and um, try to mitigate as best as possible. Um, the what about to the fourth uh, responsibility? Is this performance measurement and goal attainment? This is something that I think uh, we decided that we really wanted at the last retreat, um, or maybe it was the first retreat. Um, but, and, and, you know, we've been doing this through the receiving of reports. Uh, and, you know, we get those reports and we discuss them. This would provide a framework for, for how to discuss those reports because we would have the goals, we would get the reports, we would then measure the uh, content of the report against the original goal. And, um, you know, we could tell Bill um, or, um, you know, the organization in general, if we believe that um, the work that was performed um, achieved the goal and um, it creates that feedback cycle, um, you know, in a formal manner um, that, like, I, I think we don't have right now. Um, and then the, the final responsibility is, you know, simply basically that same feedback cycle for ourselves. So um, we would want to make sure that the very first thing is that, you know, if we're spending, you know, five or six meetings discussing a topic that, uh, you know, that is actually a topic that we have said, you know, impacts the, the goals of the organization. So we want to make sure that we're prioritizing things correctly um, and evaluating our prioritization, um, you know, not just in, in how we say that we're going to address things, but then practically speaking, whether or not we're actually spending the time where we say we're going to. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, maybe even a, then, uh, a more granular level, we can also set some um, expectations for ourselves uh, and, and measure our progress against those uh, as well. Um, so really two kinds of feedback there, one for the organization and then one for the board. Um, so I think there's a lot there. Um, and I went through it kind of quickly, but I do uh, intend to, to pass this out, uh, at least the board members as a reference. Um, so you guys will have it to, to review, um, uh, especially when we uh, talk about policy governance next time and then, and then make our, our recommendation. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, I have one, Grant. When, yeah. the, when the district was formed, I, Millie, you might have been part of that. I know there were 
Jim Farr, and there are a lot of very good people who put the district together, and they felt at the time they were dotting all the I's and crossing the T's. Is there a deficiency somewhere in this board that this process is going to cover, going to make up for? In other words, it, it just seems extremely complicated. Right. So I would say that this prop, this falls in the category of continuous improvement, right? So we have a functioning board that, um, you know, like I said, does fall into this constituent representational and traditional. Um, we are somewhat reactive. Uh, I don't, I don't think I'll get much disagreement there. Um, and this would put us into a more proactive model. Um, and so that's, and that's where the improvement comes from. Uh, it does require, you know, a greater degree of, um, you know, complexity. Um, and, you know, that's, that's really up to the board if we want to put in that work um, to make that improvement. Um, you know, I, I guess the status quo could be a third option. Thanks, Grant. Yep. Grant, you might want to just stop sharing your screen and might make it easier. But... Sure, I can do that. I didn't know if anyone would want to see uh, any of the content, but. Can you send that to us? I can. I will share it um, with everybody uh, via the via the share. You'll have access to the document, and um, I, th I think that's okay. If if it's not, just let me let me know, Nilda or um, Bill. Um, we, we need to just turn it into a PDF and give it to everyone. Okay. Thanks. Uh, do you think you could? Um, you think you could do that, Bill? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. I can okay. work with Aaron. We'll get it out by tomorrow. Okay. Let's that. Thank you. It looks like uh, Joanna might have a question or comment. Thank you. Um, Grant, my question is uh, part of the, the conversation that we had at the last meeting mm -hmm. where we discussed, um, where we kind of differentiated between organizational goals and board goals. Can you talk about how that um, issue comes into play with uh, the results based, sure. and then next time with the policy. Thank you. Yep. Um, so for the results based, uh, the goals, uh, which I think we have uh, in there as a vision, mission, um, goals uh, statement, those would be developed yes. by a committee. Um, the the specific sort of aims um, would come from a committee. Um, that committee, I think, would also be. We can give them guidance, like if we want them to be smart goals. You know, we can let them know that, and when they come back, hopefully we'll have smart goals. If we want them to be, you know, broader uh, in scope, we can we can let them know that as well. Uh, so we'll have a little bit of a guidance role in, in determining, you know, how those goals are set up. Um, but the the specific objectives, uh, I believe, would be, would come from a committee. Um, and then once we have those uh, goals in place, then we'll have to come up with a framework for how to evaluate them, and that could be. Um, you know, reports provided uh, with a deadline. Um, I would suggest maybe we don't have them all do it once. Uh, if there's several goals in place, maybe they could get reported on uh, over the course of the year. And uh, when we receive those reports, uh, it's up to us to um, scrutinize them and provide feedback and determine whether or not the goal was actually met. And if it was, we say, yes, we, we believe this you know, we set this goal, we met this goal, we check that off and um, we develop a new goal that either, uh, if, if there's additional continuous improvement, um, you know, like a, a notch up from there, we can, we can set that goal at that time. Um, but so that's how that feedback cycle works. Great. And then Great. for the board, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's more like an audit system where we'll have our own set of criteria that we set around, you know, what we do. I think that it makes sense to do that in these public meetings. Um, I don't know, it might be possible to do it in a retreat setting. I'm not sure. Um, that would be something to uh, maybe um, talk about with uh, Nilda and John, or Nilda and Bill at some time, at some point. So I think there's a few different ways of doing that too. Thank you, Grant. Welcome. Grant, anybody else have any other questions for Grant? I just wanted to say that this results-based system of governance makes sense to me, especially in terms of really figuring out what the goals are and really 
being able to close that loop by looking at, you know, the reports, the feedback, how we met our goals, and and moving on from there. Like it could, and again, I like that you said continuous improvement. You know, how can we serve the community better? Yeah, I think that the committee. Um at our last meeting, I think we sort of acknowledged that too, that this results-based uh, governance sort of fits in with the way that we operate or the way that, you know, we feel that some of the feedback has been that we want to operate. Um, you know, we're asking for that information. We're trying to provide that feedback and, um, you know, this gives that framework. Absolutely. And it also makes us responsible to understand that information. Not that we have to go and, you know, teach every class for every teacher. That's not, that's certainly not our place. But we should be understanding um, the roles of, you know, the budget and mm -hmm. um, supervision throughout the, uh, or building, um, building maintenance that needs to happen. We we need to have a, a working understanding of that, and so um, I think it's our responsibility to do this. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks, Grant and Nina mm -hmm. and Jack for taking the extra time to meet and and study up on these um, governance structures so that you can teach us as a board. And we look forward to the next presentation, which will be on, you said policy governance, is that correct? That's right, policy. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you all. All right, we'll move on to item 7A. 7A is the COVID update, and I'm gonna turn it over to Bill to give us a COVID update. Thanks, Nilda. Um, earlier this afternoon, we had two updates that went out to the parents and the entire community. Hopefully, I can totally understand if people have not had a chance to see those. They went out around three. Uh, but uh, as everyone heard yesterday in the governor's press conference, uh, there was an announcement that after February 28th, that the mandatory masking would not be renewed and that we would be in a place of where schools that have an 80 percent vaccination rate or greater would be allowed to go without masks and um, knowing that this was coming i wanted to i want to give you some details about that because um, there's more intricacies looking at this policy that this recommendation that was put forth last august than what was stated yesterday at the press conference so I want to make sure the board is fully, and everyone's in this meeting fully up to speak where that's at. And there's some, some work that we've been doing as superintendents across Champlain Valley. As you know, we've been working really well together, uh, the 16 uh, school districts slash supervisory unions are trying to keep ourselves aligned. Um, so one of the pieces that has, it was initially put out in August 2021 is that the state of Vermont would have the data on our vaccination rate. And one of the things that wasn't mentioned yesterday was that we have not been given a date when that data will be given to us. So that's one of the key indicators. We don't, we, we, I want to say a big thank you to all our nurses and the folks that support them as administrative assistants um, that have been keeping track of what we know to be the students that are vaccinated. And I can tell you that BFA is pretty close to that 80%. We do, I do not have up to date figures sitting here today. Um, I, I asked them the other day and, and they just need a little bit more time to look at it. I know of two of our pre-K-8 schools are in about the 65, mid-60s areas of vaccination rates. Um, but it has to officially come through the Agency of Education. We haven't been given a date when we'll get that data and we, we don't know yet when that's going to happen. Um, knowing this was happening, I put out a thought exchange. The board, you've all participated in thought exchange. It's that survey tool that then you rank ideas and thoughts. Um, I did that with the whole staff on Monday with a question that really said, as we move to a state of masking by choice, what thoughts and ideas do you have as we plan to make this transition? We had about 286 staff. Remember, we have about 560, so almost half participated. They generated 260 thoughts and 6,800 approximate, approximately 6,800 rankings. Of those, I'm gonna give you the top five rankings by the staff of ideas as we make this plan. And 
I was elated, before I said this, I'm just gonna say I was elated because these were ideas that we were discussing as a leadership team. So nothing here is really called nice confirmation. The number one thing by everyone was to set an environment and a climate where we support everyone in their personal choice. Whether they choose to wear a mask or choose not to wear a mask, but that we're moving to a personal choice place whether we're still under the 80% or if we eventually, as was alluded to in the press conference, that there'll be a change after that. But this is only the first step. The second one was supply enough antigen tests. Uh, and I'll talk more about our supply right now, but it's gotten really robust. So staff and students can continually test if they need to. And it's recommended with antigen tests uh, because we won't have access to PCR testing after this week, uh, that you have two a week. Um, have masks for those who want them. KN95s, we just, I'm going to talk more about some things we just received today. Continue to support our vaccine clinics, which we've been providing to our students. Uh, we'll continue to do that. And make sure it's consistent across Maple Run. Now, this is one of the things that's tough with the 80% rule. Because we may have some schools that are at 80% and some that aren't. I know many, talking with the superintendents uh, earlier this week in Champlain Valley, almost all of us sit where we know we have some schools that meet that 80% and some that don't. I don't think there's anyone that had it consistently across all their schools within their school district slash supervisory. So uh, that's where we are right now. There's a letter that details all that. Um, I really want to point you to, I've already said this once, it was the number one concern of the staff and we had the letter already drafted really, but just really recognize this is going to be a significant change. It's going to produce anxiety for some, fear for some, relief for others. But I think it's understanding that our climate needs to be respectful to everyone's choice and that's their choice and we support that and we support protection for those who need it. Um, so I, I, that's my number one goal is to foster an environment of that. Um, the second piece that we sent home today was an announcement that uh, the governor made yesterday that we had heard it be coming and we've received enough tests to do this that every student in Maple Run will get two tests before vacation. So in the pre-K-8 schools, that means that they'll be handed out to every student in their classroom to take home. One kit, you know, you know how the antigen tests come, two tests per kit. And then at the high school, it'll be a, students can pick it up at the connector. Uh, it's just too much logistical in the high school to do it any other way. So that announcement went out again today. Uh, we're having these kits and we're giving them to the staff as well. So uh, just this past week, we received over 8,000 tests uh, to make a run. If you went to one of our back offices, you'd see it's pretty much packed in cartons. Uh, we've been distributing those out to schools. As well as today, literally today, we received over 3,000 KN95 masks. I can tell you that our own schools have used the ESSER money, as I spoke about in the video, uh, to purchase more masks. So uh, when Aaron and I were talking earlier, he said we were going to have plenty of masks with what we know is coming in this week from our purchases. Um, so if anyone who needs a mask will have a mask, um, student staffs. So that's my COVID update for right now. I can tell you that um, you know we're seeing less numbers in the schools. Uh, the case count's gone down. I, I talked a little bit about that at the previous meeting. It's really going down. We're seeing that across the state. Uh, the other part that's hard to know is, you know, we get some reporting, but we're not getting the reporting we had before. And is that because of a lower, I, I'd like to think optimistically that that's because of lowering the effect of the Omicron virus, but frankly, we just, we don't know. And we're trusting everyone to take care of themselves, and if we see someone with symptoms, we support them in getting the best care they can. Are we expecting these people to all take the test before they come back? Is I, that the hope? That's the hope. Okay. It's, not a, it's not a mandate, it's, totally it's not a requirement, but that's, and that's something that came from the state of Vermont. Right. Yeah. Just, they, how they had headed into the winter time break, now we're in February break, and they have the tests on hand so we can give it to everyone and say, take okay. two, and we'll get another announcement out about that. Um, you know, it says in here you should take two tests 24 hours apart, starting two days before returning yeah. to school. Okay, thank you. Yeah.
Joanna. Bill, um, I appreciate uh, when you talked about how, you know, just trying to uh, create an atmosphere in the schools and in the classrooms surrounding just respecting people's choice. Was there any uh, conversation around, um, you know, just FERPA issues uh, with students and students who, students or staff, excuse me, who have um, medical issues or whatnot and how that will play a role in this? Uh, what we have been- I mean, You have to address it before, right? You yeah, we haven't really had to address it before. Where? And when we have student needs that would be protected by HIPAA, we, we take care of that. So we would take care of the same way here. If there are student needs or there are staff needs that need to be to do that, we've been doing that in the past. So I see that pretty similar to what we've been doing. That, that I will acknowledge that wearing a mask is very visible to others, where it isn't with other illnesses, right? So I'm not naive, uh, but I think that's why we want to start the, the start right off with how I'm saying tonight. This is masking by choice. It's a, we respect everyone's choice they make. We support them in the choices they make. And, uh, and that's how we're gonna conduct our business. I think it's just, it's, it's simple to say, it's a lot of work to produce that environment. Thanks, Bill. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to 7B, which is implicit bias and anti-racism training. Bill, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Yep. Um, so, as you all know, we've talked about this a lot, that we see a really close tie between social emotional learning, well-being, um, our restorative practices, and equity, and that we need our equity to be infused in everything we do. Um, we are in the beginning of that journey, and that's journey that we started really, we've had it in other years, but I think this year is really the beginning of that journey. Um, we, as many of you know, you've heard this name before, we've worked with Dr. Joelle Van Lint on trauma-informed teaching and trauma-informed practices. And while she's not a leader in equity, she is a leader in supporting all students. And uh, I just wanted to update you, I don't think I have this We've been so busy with COVID and other things that Joel's been working with us all year uh, and working in our schools. And in fact, in, start in, Jan in January in service, she was here most of the day working, I think, with most of our schools, or she's been doing that on our early release days on Wednesday. And that's really been working with students that are impacted um, traumatically and how we can best serve them. And a lot of it's bearing based work research. Um, I just think that's a good thing to kind of keep in mind that we've been continuing to do that work for many years here at Maple Run. And, uh, I thank Alexis and Joan and many others on the leadership team for leading that work. The second thing I wanted to let you know is that uh, city school and town school are creating plans right now and getting ready for implementation for racial equity professional development with outside consultants. Uh, in March, I hope to have both Angela and Joan talk a little bit about those plans and maybe in April how they're going. Uh, but I want to let folks know that that, that work is, has begun uh, and is going on in the schools to support our teachers and giving them more tools to be able to uh, support su students with racial and equity issues and so that they can be a, can be a more equitable environment. Uh, third, the third thing I wanted to let you know is, as you know, we were work, we've been working with restorative, with partners in restorative change uh, to facilitate our work of the design team to host a community conversation. We had this plan for December, and we had to postpone that, uh, as you all know, and how to talk about how we can create a more welcoming community and school system. Um, as you know, that was postponed. This past week, I learned from Lisa Bellinger, who you met, the board met back in December, along with Margaret Bass, that they've had some changes in their staffing, uh, which has really caused them to look at their scope of work. Uh, they've had a couple staff members move on, and they said that they really thought that there were better partners that had done this work with other school systems in Vermont, 
and actually put me in touch with them. And I met, I met with one of them today. Uh, I am keeping them anonymous because they're going to give us a proposal and, and it's not fair to them. Uh, they have done some really good work in helping communities support schools in racial and equity work in their communities. They've done work in different counties within Vermont. Um, after I explained where I thought we were, and I wanted to tell them that this is my, my viewpoint, so it's not the only viewpoint that's correct, or mine may be wrong, um, but that we need to look at a model that can bring more people into the design team process than we had at the beginning. And that was a reflection of Lisa and Margaret as well when I talked with them last week. So we're going to take a look at this with, uh, with a couple consultancy groups to be able to come and host that. And as I said, I just had a conversation today and they're going to bring together some proposals for us. Um, I can't give you more details, but I, can, I, I stress to, to the, the consultants that we need the, it's really important to include students, parents, board, and community members as partners in the design committee, in the design committee process. Not just in the design of the process, but there are actually voices on the committee building the process. And they were very open to doing that. Um, as well as to provide board training and recommend from this process, recommend training for the school system and work that we can do. So I was a little aghast last week when I heard that uh, Partners in Restorative Change, um, they had kind of shifted their work and couldn't do this, but I actually think we'll have a better outcome in the end in working with people that this has been the core of their work uh, for several years. So. More to come. I wish I had more details for the board tonight. I'm sorry I don't. Uh, but this has been an evolving piece for the past seven to ten days. Thank you, Bill. Any questions for Bill? Yeah, I do. Um, this is Joanna again. So, I appreciate the work that you're doing here in, in terms of a larger community. Um, one thing that I think that we could be doing on our own um, or as a board would be to begin the education, you know, for us. I'm, I'm, I guess I need more, more uh, understanding why, what's, what's holding us back from doing that. So I, I think it's a, I think you, what I have seen other boards do in Vermont is hire their own consultant to provide that training. And uh, frankly, that, that's what I've seen. That's fine. We can do that. Joe, are you talking about like there was a bunch of uh, resources put out to us, a couple of books, a state in the initiative to start? Yeah. Or just just solidifying, you know, a beginning, you know, for us. We we've talked um, <clears throat> the request that came before us initially. My understanding was having the board participate in some kind of racial equity training and diversity and race, race, inclusiveness and racial equity training, and then. It seems to me like the, the focus got kind of shifted over to, to providing this very big scale um, educational process community wide. And um, I'm just, you know, and I had, you know, proposed a couple of different trainings that we've gotten the staff and, and whatnot, both at Maple Run and at um, FNESU. And I, you know, felt like I was kind of slow down on that, which is fine. I don't care how we do it. I just would like to move forward with that process. Um, I don't think that I, whether we hire somebody to do that or we watch the same, you know, videos that uh, teachers within our school district have, have watched um, or participate in some kind of, you know, um, book um, discussion, whatever it is however we choose to do that. Thank you. So um, I know, I, know um, I just want to verify that, that that 
it's the board's understanding that the training is supposed to be both for the community and for the board. Is that is that how everyone remembers it? Remember. That would be like nod your head or shake your head or do something. Well, yeah, I didn't I didn't think that was the only thing that was going to happen. I mean, we started out by reading articles and sharing out and having feedback and having those conversations. And I think it was good, um, uncomfortable and good for us to have those conversations. And then it stopped when we started talking about this community event, which is a good event, but there's still more work to be done. Um, right, right, right. I, I mean, I remember um, Joanna's point. Yes, we talked about both. I mean, we want to we want the board to be educated. We want staff to be educated. And in, in, in addition to that, we want the community to be educated. And I think we were on a good path. And then we got a little bit derailed with um, some of the things that occurred in December. Now we're trying to sort of recover. And in the meantime, the resource that we were going to use has now sort of taken a different direction. So we have a new resource. And on um, you know, I mentioned the same thing to Bill, whatever you guys decide to do with the teachers, you can just, you know, try to invite the board and some board members might be able to participate and some may not, depending on the time and the offering and what the method of, of uh, training is. I mean, if it's something where somebody can log in later or something, you know, we might as well be able to take advantage of any offering that the teachers get. So um, stay tuned, this isn't going away. The, these items are gonna remain on the agenda until we get them nailed. Um, including that next item, setting goals, which I know um, is near and dear to Joanna's heart. Um, and I'm, I'm going to just tell you that last week, last meeting, we talked about sort of trying to figure out what, where was the cart and where was the horse. And I think what we determined was that we needed to get the governance presentation. So we got um, the, the results based one tonight. We're going to get policy governance next time and then there's going to be a recommendation i believe from the subcommittee which we will have to either accept or you know adopt or abort or decide we want to morph it into something a little different and then we can figure it out because depending on the governance system that we choose there might be some goals that are implied so um i don't at at the risk of kicking the can down the road we really can't do goal setting tonight yet so it's going to remain on the agenda until we get it figured out Comments, questions, concerns? I, I think that's fair. I think that we are definitely on a on a more clear path now. And I, I have no need to do that first. So I can thank you. Jack. <laughs> um sort of uh piggybacking on what Joanna started with about the uh, racial equity uh education. Um I really feel that the board should take a leadership role. I'm kind of uh, thinking that maybe Joanna had this this in mind that uh, we shouldn't just be uh, uh, working with whatever happens with the schools, which should happen, but we as a board, maybe in a retreat type setting uh, should include all of us and get, uh, you know, really step up and get the training ourselves uh, to show the schools, the community that we're involved ourselves, totally, the whole board. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, Joanna has, has a point, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm not speaking out of turn, Joanna, or, or, or misinterpreting how you feel, but I got a, got a sense that uh, that we that we should take a leadership role and actually uh, do some training ourselves. Uh, and I'm all all for that. But I think the whole board needs to weigh in. I mean, it's not just Joanna's decision or my decision or whatever, but I'd like to make a motion that we do that, a formal motion. I, I'll make a motion that the so, board- So you can't, it's not really warned as an action item, uh, Jack. So I don't think we can 
make a motion, but your comments are definitely not falling on deaf ears and we could take all that under okay. consideration all right. for sure, for sure. Okay, I got you. Um, thank you. Anyone else? You know, I, I understand the need for equity training and I think the biggest bang for the buck is the kids, that's what we're here for, and the parent, the community, because they're the ones that are gonna influence the kids. I'm not sure for the board, are we currently making decisions that are not equitable? That's what I'm wondering. So do we, that, I mean, are we are wondering about it, then we should study it. See if we so, don't. Maybe we I, don't. Think, I think Peter, you know, remember that um, presentation that we listened to from the guy from New York. I mean, yeah. he was sort of illustrating, I think, in his presentation that we unconsciously make those decisions. You know that we're not we're not purposefully saying that we're going to do something in an inequitable manner, but that we should look at some of the processes that we put in place and see if we have broken the equity rule, so to speak, when we put those in place. So you know, I, I don't think it's a oh my god, you've done all these things wrong. I think it's more of an awareness. Look, look, you could have done this better. I, I would think that that sort of training would be valuable, but I also think it's an individual thing. I think that it's more introspective, that people need to be trained to look within themselves. Are they doing it? I'm not sure, personally, that a, a group activity is going to help me. I need to examine it myself, how I'm doing, and I, I don't think sitting down with a group... I, I've been through, through tons of them as a teacher. We used to have a lot of them, and so a lot of studies prove right now that they're not that they're not valuable in changing opinions and changing minds. I can change my mind if I sit down and listen to someone or I read and, and I mull it over in my mind. That's the way I'm going to change and examine. I'm not sure the rest of you, I like that I'm speaking for myself. Well, I, and I understand that and every, everybody's going to do that a little differently dep depending on, you know, how they're how they're built. And um, I guess we just have to kind of work through this process. I mean, we've gone on this path. We said we were going to do this. We're going to, we certainly want Bill to continue uh, working with this new group of people. And as soon as we, you know, I think there's some light at the end of the tunnel with uh, the masking, um, you know, potentially changing soon. And we can gather people together and do things in, in uh, venues and environments that are more conducive to teamwork type stuff, you know. Um, so I'm optimistic. Thank you all for your commentary on this. Uh, next item on the agenda is the organizational meeting um, update. So we wanted to just make sure that everyone realizes that the next official meeting in March, the first meeting in March will be the, uh, the organizational meeting. So that's when we vote in, you know, new chair, vice chair, uh, clerk, all the different positions. So we wanted to make sure that everybody had a copy of the template and can consider uh, any positions that they might um, be interested in. Um, I think it's pretty clear as, as it goes through that there's a number of things that we have to remember to authorize for we do it sort of in one big process at the upcoming organizational meeting. Does anyone have any questions related to that? And just for the record, I'm interested in sharing again, if you guys are interested in having me, but just, you know, certainly open to um, other people being interested also. Um, next item on the agenda is item 8B. Um, I need a motion to approve a one-year extension to the current transportation contract with Grand Avenue Enterprises. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Is there a second? Grant, I think you made that second. Okay. Discussion, Martha, Bill. Uh, yeah, thank you, Nova. This is the last year that I think, right, Martha, that we can redo this contract. Um, we're allowed to do it up to... So, <laughs> you want me to keep, jump in? Okay. Jump in, Martha. So we had a contract that uh, carried us over five years. And um, we can renew it for optional years as long as we stay within the um, NEEP that is approved at the AOE level. Um, and that's what our suggestion is, is to renew it for additional year, for one additional year at this point. 
Thank you. Any questions for Martha or Bill? Hearing none, we're going to take a vote. So um, those in favor of that motion um, will signify by saying yes after their, I call their name. Alicia? Yes. Joanna? Yes. Susan? Just, she coming back? She'll come back. She just stepped out for a second. Okay, Jack? Yes. Grant? Yes. Nina? Yes, sorry. Yes. Thank you. Peter? Yes. Katie? Yes. Nilda? Yes. Three, six. We have eight yeses, so we this certainly passes even without um, Susan's vote. So, well, I think we'll just move on. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is 8C. We need a motion to approve the administration's recommendation to grant Gilbert Cheney, who is a St. Albans City School custodian, an uh, unpaid leave of 20 days. May I have a motion for that, please? So moved. So moved. Alicia made the motion, I think, and Grant, you seconded it. Uh, any discussion? I think it's self-explanatory. Hearing none, um, we'll take a, a roll vote. Alicia? Yes. Joanna? Yes. Susan's not back. Uh, Jack? Yes. Grant? Yes. Nina? Yes. Peter. Yes. Katie. Yes. Nilda, yes. And Susan, we're taking a vote as to whether or not we should grant the custodian at City School additional 20 days, 20 days on paid leave. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you for that. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is a motion to approve the warrants. Acknowledging that passage of this motion will act as authorization and signature of any individual board member participating remotely. May I have that motion, please? So, so moved. Thanks. Is there a second? second? Thanks, Joanna. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying yes when your name is called. Alicia. Yes. Joanna. Yes. Susan. Jack. Yes. Grant. Yes. Nina. Yes. Peter. Yes. Katie. Yes. Nilda. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next item on the agenda is superintendent's report. Bill, do you have any additional information for your report? I think I've spoken enough tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, next item on the agenda is board announcements. Before we get go around, I have a couple. Um, I want to wish Al well. I understand he's under the weather and couldn't make it tonight. Um, I would also um, like to thank Alicia Sawyer for her three years of service on the board. She's moving on to greater and bigger and greater expectations, hopefully. And um, we're going to miss her. Um, and I also want to wish um, Ryer, Joanna, Nina, and Keith good luck in their upcoming election for uh, MR USD board. Anyone else have announcements? I do. Go ahead. So um, on March 12th at the Abbey restaurant, there's going to be a benefit dinner and sign an auction to support a former BFA student who would have been entering her sophomore year at Cornell um, this fall when she was diagnosed with an osteosarcoma. Um, she was a, a student athlete at BFA who graduated two years ago. Um, and she needs all the support she can get right now. She and her family. So we'd love to invite everyone to this um, benefit dinner at the Abbey um, and sign an auction. 
Um, and if you're looking for tickets, you can um, get in contact with Don Menard. I think actually it was published in the messenger today. And also through the Mercury, there was a some, uh, a piece on it. Um, and if, if people don't feel like going to dinner, then they're more than welcome to come to the silent auction. But um, she's a wonderful person, and um, we love all your support. What's the date again? March twelfth. March. Thank you. Any other announcements? I just want to echo the. Uh... But a gratitude to Alicia. Um, you know, my uh, first term on the board, I, I consider Alicia to be uh, something of a role model. And um, you know, thank you for that. Nice speech, speech. I don't want to give a speech. I'm I'm sad to not not be running again. I'm I'm going to miss the work of the board, but. Um... I, I trust that the board moving forward is is going going in good places and I'm excited to have some new voices on the board. So thank you all. Thanks, Alicia. Does anyone else have any comments? All right, um, we do need to go into executive session for um, personnel matters. So um, I'd like to have a motion to go into executive session for personnel matters because personnel matters meet the criteria for going into executive session without a finding. So moved. Thanks, Joanna. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Jack. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye when I call out your name. Alicia? Aye. Joanna? Aye. Susan? Aye. Jack? Aye. Grant? Yes. Nina? Aye. Peter? Aye. Katie? Aye. And Nilda? Aye.